Doncic, three-pointer over Porzingis, puts it in. Luka Doncic with 23 now in the first half. Despite oh! special play from Luka Doncic, they're down by three. Nice pass, Holiday layup is good. A brilliant game from Drew Holiday. Paul Pritchard at the buzzer. White has to hoist up a three-pointer. And it's good. Holiday at three. Bang! Washington drive, blocked by White. Oh, what a block from Derek White. A smothering defense here in the fourth quarter. And the Celtics are going to take a 2 nothing lead in the finals. All right, Jason Tatum and Kyrie Irving have both struggled in the finals thus far. Their counterparts have not. Both are shooting below 36% from the field and are combined 4 of 22 from three-point in the finals. All right, we got to break this down, really break this down. Stephen A., I'll start with you. Who do you feel like is more likely to break out in game three? Is it Tatum or Kyrie? I'm going to say Kyrie, um, and only because of desperation. The reality is, is that if Kyrie doesn't step up and remind the world what, about his greatness and about the fact that he is a champion um, and he's one of the greatest talents to ever play this game, if he doesn't show up and play like it, the Boston Celtics are going to, I'm sorry, the Dallas Mavericks are going to get swept. Um, they are on the verge of a sweep. I don't believe that's going to happen. I still see this being a series because the reason I picked the Mavs to win this series is because I thought that Porzingis' health would be compromised. That did not appear to be the case in Game 1, Shannon and Wendy. It clearly is the case entering Game 3 after he went out in the fourth quarter of Game 2. I think that changes things. The combination of that combined with the fact that you're going to Dallas. Um, if, they, if Dallas cannot lose this game. Um, not just because of history, not just because of an 0-3 deficit never being overcome, not just because of that, but there's no chance in hell that they should lose this game if Porzingis' health is compromised, if you're really, really trying to win a championship. Either they're going to mail it in or they're going to show up. And it starts with Kyrie Irving because Luka Doncic, my God, chest contusion, soreness in the leg, still goes out there, has a triple-double, carrying the team on his back. He is a superstar. There is levels to this. And Luka Doncic is showing that he is on a other he is on another level compared to most. Kyrie has had us believing that for quite some time. He departed from Cleveland wanting us to believe that. He was in Boston wanting us to believe that. He went to Brooklyn wanting us to believe that. Now he's in Dallas. He has an opportunity. If Kyrie Irving played average in game two, Shannon, you said it. If he just scored 20 to 22 points, they could have won this game. Kyrie Irving has to show up, and I think he has the talent and the heart to answer the call. I think he will. Tatum doesn't have to. He may, but he doesn't have to because he has more help. Yeah. Luka Doncic desperately needs Kyrie Irving. I think Kyrie Irving answers the call. I agree with you. I'm taking Kyrie Irving because if you look at the playoffs, Jason Tatum hadn't shot the ball particularly well all playoff long, but he has done other things to help his team win uh, as far as uh, rebounding the basketball, assisting the basketball. But Kyrie has to because I think it was the uh, – he and, and Luca scored 35 or more points in a closeout game. If I'm not mistaken, that's the first time that's happened since Shaq and Kobe. So in order for them to win, Kyrie has to come along with Luca. See, and, and Stephen A., you touched on it. Jason Tatum doesn't particularly have to go get you 30, 35 points. Because he has JB, because he has Holiday, he has a Derek White. We don't know the status of Przingas, but he has other options that can go get points and can assist them in winning. Without Kyrie being the Kyrie that we saw against uh, uh, Minnesota, the Kyrie that we saw against OKC, the, uh, Dallas doesn't have a chance of winning this game. I'm going to trust Kyrie at home to snap out of this because he shot the ball really well throughout the playoffs. Jason Tatum has been pretty much under 50% the majority of these playoff series. So, and he doesn't need to, he doesn't have to in order for them to win. So I got Kyrie uh, snapping out of his slump and not JT. I think it's Tatum. I actually dispute the concept that Tatum isn't playing well. I think he is. I don't think he's playing great. But I think he's doing a lot for his team. He is rebounding the ball terrifically, and he always rebounds the ball well in the postseason. You know, this is a stat that nobody knew and I didn't know before this week. Do you know he's averaged over 10 rebounds a game in six straight playoff series? Guess how many he's averaging in this series? He's averaging 10. And the reason he's, that's important is because he's guarding defensive center. 
the way the Celtics scheme, they put him on the defensive center, which allows Horford and uh, Porzingis to be more freelance, which is huge for the Celtics defense. Secondly, you know what Jason Kidd said the other day about how Jalen Brown was the Celtics best player? You know, yeah. actions over words, because you know who he's, he, how they're defending? They're defending with double teams on Tatum. They're not double teaming Jalen Brown. Their defense <clears throat> says that Tatum is the best player. And you know how he's reacting to those double teams? He's making plays. Passing Drew Holiday was absolutely awesome in game two. He had 26 points. He came in afterwards. He goes, you know what? I wasn't even that great. I was just trying to stay open for Tatum. And you go look at the numbers. Holiday made nine baskets in the paint. That was huge on a night when the Celtics couldn't get those, uh, those outside shots going. How did he get those baskets? How about six of the assists came off of Tatum? Mm -hmm. Because he was getting double teamed. And he was very patient in getting him the ball. Tatum is making mm -hmm. plays all over the place. Now, granted, he can't make a shot. And Shannon, you're right. He has yeah. not shot the bell, ball well throughout the postseason. And for a guy who's on first team all NBA to be, you know, shooting 30% in the finals through two games ain't good. I'm not going to defend that. But the, sit, the way things are set up, it's going to be a lot right. easier for Tatum to do this than Kyrie. Because the, the defensive mountain that Kyrie is being asked to climb right now, where they're cutting off the corner threes and cutting off the lobs and using you know, all defensive team defenders in front of him at every moment. I just, it's not so much a commentary on Kyrie and Tatum as it is, I think, the lay of the land favors Tatum. Let me say this to y'all, both of y'all. Um, you know, Tatum... When people ask the question, Shannon and I were talking about this yesterday, Wendy, um, who's the best player? And Shannon was talking about how it's hard for him not to say Jalen Brown anymore because we can't just summarily dismiss that. It's closer than people think. And I get where he's coming from. But the point that I brought up was the fact that Jason Tatum is your number one option and he's the number one focus of opposing defenses. And that is not something that Jalen Brown has had to play against. So let's see Jalen Brown be the number one option over the course of an 82-game season. And let's see him average 27 a game and what have you and all of this that's other very stuff. True. But that's not to But that's not to take anything away from the greatness that we've seen from Jalen Brown. So we got to give it where, where, where it's due. But what we also have to notice is that when you have, and Shannon's right about this, when you have... The, a, a postseason to prepare for somebody, a best of seven. Look at Jason Tatum and how he shoots. Look at where he shoots the ball from. I had a Hall of Famer explain this to me yesterday in terms of where he's shooting the ball from. Guess what? If I'm watching film on you, I know if you go right, you go into the hole because you ain't going to pull up because of how you shoot, because you shoot damn near from the left side of your face. And so guess what? If you go on right, I know you're going to lay the ball up or you're going to pass it. If you're going to go left is when you're going to pull up and step back and shoot a J. If I know how to game plan against you, I'm able to limit you. The reason why that's relevant, fellas, is because we see him in the postseason on too many occasions, Wendy. Not that he's awful because he's playing exceptional defense. He's getting others involved. He's playing selflessly. He's still playing like, you know, we know what Jason Tatum's capable of. But at the end, I got to look at you and what the expectation is. And are you doing yes. what we're accustomed to seeing you do? And that's not what he's doing. Go ahead, Shannon. Because, because here's the thing. We saw all great players. Kobe got double teamed. KD, LeBron, Michael, all the great players get double teamed. We're asking him to be the face of the NBA, and now we're saying he's struggling because he got double teamed? Steph Curry, name a great player that didn't get double teamed. And most of the guys that got double teamed didn't have a sidekick like JB to tag alongside him. So I, I, I can't use that, oh, he's getting double teamed. That's why he's struggling shooting. Some of the shots he's shooting, he shot some threes the other day, Wendy. The ball hit the backboard on the opposite side. That wasn't because of no double team. He's struggling shooting the basketball. But to his credit, he's found a way to help his team win by doing something other than scoring, which is rebounding and facilitating. So I like the fact that he's not sulking, saying, well, I can't make a shot. I'm not going to do other things. It's not hard to get rid and I shouldn't say it's not hard, but he's playing Daniel Gafford on the, on, the, on the defensive end. So when the ball goes up, Daniel Gafford is around the basket. So he better get those rebounds because if he can't keep Daniel Gafford off the glass, they don't have a chance of winning because Mavericks going to get second chance points and uh, Gafford's going to dunk him into the, uh, in the rim. But give it to his credit. I will concede this. He's found other ways to help his team win other than scoring the basketball. But this playoffs, he hadn't shot the ball well at all.